Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about, or starting to talk about, Big Brother 12. This is one of the seasons I definitely saw more of compared to the others when it came out, as I would see week, like two or three weeks of it at a time, then I would move on, then I'd enter it again, then I'd leave it again, so I had more of an understanding of the season life compared to some of the early year seasons. But obviously since 2010, I have rewatched the season many other times, and I honestly feel like and have felt like this is one of the weaker seasons, especially because it started a lot of the awful trends that has taken over the show since the season in the last decade and almost a half. With casting weaker women gameplay-wise, casting a lot of the men who are very similar to one another, the hugely scripted diary rooms, the encouraging one large alliance is team role because it makes for an easier edit, and just the increasingly bro-centric vibes that a lot of the season had and how they would replicate the season and show it in sequester so many of the future seasons could be very similar to this one. I will say that the first half is watchable enough and there are definitely some entertaining moments but the gameplay just really wasn't interesting at all and was borderline frustrating. I wouldn't say this is one of the weakest casts since there are definitely some casting gems here and some people who definitely contributed but there are a lot of others who are just very boring as well. So in general I just think this season represented a lot of what I don't like about Big Brother but watching it this time I definitely found it more tolerable in comparison. But I can't just ignore the huge sift that this season caused and has permeated since, especially regarding the casting, where I felt like from the season onwards, the casting is a lot more inconsistent. Regarding the week one, I honestly think it's one of the weaker week ones in Big Brother history, especially due to the saboteur twist, which took up a lot of time, but I was glad that it flopped and it really shows how sometimes the cast can outsmart production. And in general, I really like seeing production twists failing, but there really wasn't much to talk about this week that is worth it or that I found very entertaining or memorable. So we are introduced to the saboteur twist where they are supposed to torment and taunt the house guests as they get a prize in the middle of the season, a monetary prize. Prior to the intro plans, Andrew mentions that his Judaism will not affect his game. Brittany is a small town girl who will play a big city game. Hayden mentions being a ladies man and being the most competitive person ever, which I definitely think he lived up to. Rachel mentions her boobs, but she is a chemist. Kathy talks about being a sheriff. Monet talks about having high standards. Matt is a genius who is a part of Mensa, but doesn't look like it. Annie mentions knowing the game inside and out while using her bisexuality to her advantage. Lane mentions getting his hands dirty in the ranch. Enzo mentions that it's no one's business about a strategy, clearly playing up to the Italian Bosch shtick. Brennan talks about being a swim coach who is used to high school drama. Kristen is going to work them in. Reagan is going to use his communication major to his advantage. Matt is annoyed with people who always talk about the religion and it pants to Andrew so it's clear that they are supposed to conflict and it's kind of interesting with how Andrew's fate ends up in the season which is definitely influenced by Matt. They try to set up Annie being annoyed with Monet until so doesn't like fake boobs and immediately pants to Rachel. Hayden is willing to flirt with a gay guy to stay another week. Reagan wants to align with a big brownie guy as it pants to Lane but this never really pans out in the season. And Brendan is willing to wear his speedo to get people to do what he wants. And it's even funny knowing the stunt or the controversy that happened with him post-season, a few months after it ended. Brendan talks about how good Rachel and Brittany will look in a bathing suit, so interesting hindsight there, pretending his future wife. And Annie talks about how much he likes Brittany and wants to work with her, which doesn't last long at all. Hayden talks about how hot Kristen is and how he's going to hook up with her in a week or two, and Christian gushes about him too, and he's pretty much right about how long it took. Monet is annoyed with Rachel's ditziness and her boobs, where Enzo also mentions Rachel being annoying and her boobs. I don't know why there's so much commentary on Rachel's boobs. Anyways, Reagan talks about how hot Brennan is and how he wants to work with him, and we know this does not last long and things get very nasty between them in the season. Brittany loves how Reagan is a flaming homosexual and how she wants to work with him, which pretty much happens. Annie decides to hide her bisexuality since she feels like it would hurt her gameplay. 
Julie tells the house guests about the saboteur twist and how someone in the house is a saboteur. Andrew sits out of the HOH competition, and people think that he's the saboteur due to it, since they think it's done to sit out of the HOH competition, though this has happened beforehand, and BB5 being the first on my mind with Well, if I remember correctly. Monet wins the $10,000 prize, just like Glory did in BB5, and she also suffers the same fate. Long story short, Hayden ends up winning the first HOH, though he didn't want to initially. The lights are turned off, and the saboteur is able to do something, and the house gets to sweat Brendan, since he was away brushing his teeth, where Andrew decides to play a prank, causing people to suspect him as well, and it's just a really poor game move on Andrew's part. There's more saboteur boring talk, but we do see Brendan bonding with Annie and Rachel, where he reveals his education and Rachel is turned on because Brendan is so awesome, and they both bond over their love of science and education in science. Annie feels like the third wheel, and there's some talk about Annie being the saboteur because Kathy mentions that it being a girl would be unexpected. Annie reveals to Reagan that she's bisexual with a girlfriend, and they have a nice bonding moment about it. We have more Brendan and Rachel following for one another and talking about their love for science, and people start to notice how they clung on to one another. Hayden and Enzo start to bond, and Enzo uses a bunch of awful mafia references, and at least to the brigade being formed, with Lane and Matt, since Enzo knows that none of them are the saboteur, since they were all on the same couch. They talk about being the most successful alliance in Big Brother history, which they were until recent seasons. He then talks about nominating Brennan and Rachel, and he doesn't want them aligning with one another, mentioning that Brennan is the one he wants gone. Brennan ends up accidentally showing kiss, but during the half-not competition, which Rachel loves, and Kathy performs horribly in an iconic way during the competition. Brittany and Kathy's memory wall faces are covered, and even though Andrew tells Hayden, the latter still thinks that Andrew is the saboteur. Brittany pitches her case to Hayden and mentions that she would nominate Brennan and Kathy to send Kathy home, since she thinks Kathy is causing trouble in the house, as they had a small tiff earlier in the episode about the have not competition. Hayden nominates the future husband and wife, Brennan and Rachel, for eviction. Brendan was not shocked that he was nominated because Hayden is threatened by his competitiveness, which is true, but is annoyed that Rachel is nominated with him. She doesn't get why she was nominated, and Annie enters the room wondering why they are nominated, though she is being careful with how much she associates with them from now on. And so notices how Annie is trying to cheer the showman up and how he has his eye on her. Enzo tells his allies that Annie is aligned with Brendan and Rachel, and she joins them for a conversation where it immediately gets awkward. Brennan whines about being nominated and being around ignorant people like Hayden, and Rachel tells him that she'll use the veto on him if she wins, and they end up making up under the covers after agreeing to date after the house, though the house is clearly watching them. Brendan and Hayden have a talk, and it's the generic talk about how Brennan is a good competitor, and he somehow threatens Hayden, mentioning that he could go at him, but he wants to go after the weaker people in the house. Brendan mentions that he trusts Annie, which only makes Hayden more suspicious, and confirms that Annie is aligned with the showman. Rachel rolls her eyes when she pulls Monet's chip out of the bag, which will become important later on, and clearly shows that they weren't getting along at this point. And Enzo suggests nominating Kathy as a pawn if one of them wins, and Matt suggests Annie. Brendan has another conversation with Hayden about mentioning that he wants to work with him, but also threatens to come after him in the same breath. Brendan wins the veto, and the brigade is pissed where we also learn that Andrew threw the veto. The Alliance talk about the replacement nominee, since they don't want to send Rachel home, and they realize that sending home Kathy would be a waste, so Matt and Enzo realize that they should backdoor Annie. The Brigade and Brittany mention that they are going to send Annie home, and also mentions the possibility of her being the saboteur. Annie speaks to Monet and Brittany, where she's wondering about the replacement, and they claim that it will probably be a girl and Brittany mentions that Hayden said that Annie is close to Brennan and Rachel, which she denies. Brittany mentions in the diary room that she's giving this information to hopefully build something with Annie in the future, since she has no loyalties with anyone in their house at this point. Annie doesn't trust Brittany, so she asks Hayden about this, and Annie throws Brittany and Monet under the bus, claiming that they will do anything to stay in the house. Lane speaks to Hayden about sending Rachel home over Annie, since they could persuade her, and Rachel will stick with Brendan. Brennan renews himself out of the block, and Annie is named the replacement nominee, where she lets us out at Brittany, though this was all due to Annie overplaying and making that really dumb move. Rachel decides to lay low, since Annie is already lashing out and blowing up at people, where Annie tells them that they will enjoy next week, 
since she knows that she is a goner and feels betrayed by Brennan protecting Rachel over her. She yells at him in front of the house about their alliance being off, though she ends up somewhat apologizing to him later, though he feels terrible. Rachel is about to pounce on Brennan and he interrupts their makeout session because he was venting to her about Emmy, and she's annoyed, but he thought she could be there for him emotionally as a person who lets him vent. It is revealed that Emmy is a saboteur, and we have some fake suspense of Andrew speaking to Hayden about Rachel needing to go to split up the showmance. Emmy speaks to a group of people about how she's going home and how she mentions that Brendan is lying about his occupation. Apparently, on the live feeds, a lot of the house guests suspected that Annie was a saboteur, and this was confirmed when the diary room was trying to push them to keep Annie over Rachel, which just made them want to evict her even more. Annie is evicted in a unanimous 10 to 0 vote. From the little we saw of Annie here, I really liked her, and I think she would have made the season a lot more interesting as she stayed, since she just had that magnetic personality and was willing to be messy and play the game. But I don't think she was good at the game at all. I do think she got very frantic. It didn't seem like she was aligned with many people in the house, and she was already on the out, and was just kind of sketchy. And while the saboteur twist might have played a part into how she played the game, I don't see her doing much better if she was on another season, or I don't think she would have done a lot better this season without it, as she was definitely very emotional and she lashed out when she should have held it together. Week 2 is definitely more entertaining than week 1, as there is some drama, though it's kind of catty and annoying, and the gameplay is absolutely horrendous. But at least it wasn't a complete dud like the first week, so the season's somewhat improving from here. Though the strong anti brinchal rhetoric really starts here. Or maybe not starts, but really picks up here. Brandon decides to be honest about his occupation, since Annie added it at the eviction in her eviction speech, but people still want him out. Rachel wins HOH and everyone is shocked and pissed off, especially Brittany and Monet. Andrew ends up cheering excitedly and people are extremely suspicious about why he's doing that, since he added that he felt comfortable with showing that he is close to them. And so thinks that it's really Brendan's HOH and they seemingly regret sending any packing over Rachel almost immediately. Rachel knows that she can't use her age or age for revenge, but to make it far in the house, and it seems like their eyes are on Monet and Brittany. Monet and Brittany outright call out Andrew for celebrating that they lost the competition, as the both of them were in the tiebreaker with Rachel, and he doesn't handle it well. Of course, Hayden is worried, since he nominated the showman's last week, and we get some more about Hayden and Kristen's showman's, where she's hard to read, and he rants about how hot she is. The two start to spend time together, and we see Monet and Brittany bashing Andrew, Kristen, and Rachel, and we see how close the two women have gotten. You start to notice that a lot of the women really start bashing one another, and they're kind of just putty in the brigade tent due to the cattiness that happens between all of them in the season. Hayden speaks to Re Rachel to clear his case, and he throws Brittany under the bus, though Rachel mentions that both Monet and Brittany are catty, and how Kristen is the only girl she wants to talk to. It's interesting to see how this ends up changing. Rachel suggests for Hayden to align with herself and Brendan, and he skips around it, though he only cares about the brigade and Kristen being safe. Matt talks to Rachel about Andrew being happier than Brendan about her winning, and Rachel doesn't get why Matt is so paranoid about Andrew being close to her when he isn't. The house feels good that Annie leaves a message about being a saboteur, and Rachel has a conversation with Brittany, who mentions that she was not planning on targeting the couple, but she would have targeted Andrew, since everyone mentioned last week that he would have went home if he wasn't safe last week. Rachel speaks to Monet, who also denies that she would have nominated Andrew in a floater, and Rachel thinks that she means Matt. Clearly, Brittany and Monet are bullshitting her, and Rachel speaks to Hayden to ask him if he's on their side or not, since they want to know where everyone stands, and he mentions that he and Kristen will vote however they want, though Brennan mentions that Lane and Enzo are possible targets in the future. Browbeating people like this to see where they stand generally tend to not work well in Big Brother, so this wasn't a good move on Brenchel's part. Rachel nominates Money and Brittany for eviction, and everyone kind of knows that Money and Rachel don't like one another at all, as it's something that they all mention. Brittany and Monet obviously do not buy Rachel's rationale for nominating them, and they cry in the have-not room since they claim it's a personal move, 
Morning rants about wanting to slap Rachel, and the two are delusional about never saying anything bad about her, though they are planning on nominating her if they won the HOH. Matt and Lane feel like one of them go up if a uh, nominee wins the veto, and Rachel speaks to Brittany, where she tells her that she wants Monet out of the house because she's a competitor targeting herself and Brennan, where Brittany throws Andrew under the bus. Rachel cries to Brennan about making Brittany cry, and she generally feels bad, and Brennan thinks that the nominees are playing the emotional game to get to Rachel. Brittany tells Monet that Rachel is so jealous of her, and they all call her a bunch of whores and strippers, which so lovely. Matt comes up with this lie about his wife having a rare bone disease that he heard on a random television show, since no one would want to vote out a guy whose wife has this condition. Brittany ends up winning the veto, and Rachel has to come up with a replacement nominee. Brittany pulls Monet in a room, where she surmises a plan where they need to push Andrew to be backdoored, since no one cares about him. Monet speaks to Rachel and doesn't get why Rachel is after her, and she essentially throws Andrew under the bus again, where Rachel knows that Andrew would go home and doesn't want Monet or Brittany to go after her. Rachel tells Brennan that she's thinking about putting Andrew up, and Brennan doesn't think it's a smart move at all, since Andrew isn't going after them, and trying to appease Monet and Brittany won't work. Reagan and Matt go to the HRH room, and Rachel tells them that they cannot vote out Andrew if he is up, and Matt suggests for himself to go up if they want Monet gone. Matt mentions in the day room that doing this will get Brencho's trust, and he'll come off like a hero to his alliance, but he wants the couple to tell people that he's surprised. Honestly, all this is just a huge overplay on Matt's end. The showmen argue about what to do, since Rachel thinks that it is odd that Matt offered himself as a pawn, and Brennan mentions that Andrew is an ally. Brittany takes herself off the block, and Rachel nominates Matt as the replacement nominee. Monet and Brittany are blindsided with the choice of a replacement nominee, since they know that Monet is a goner, and Matt is bragging about orchestrating everything. We have more of Monet and Brittany crying, and then bashing everyone in the house, and Matt joins in as well so he can think, or he can give the perception that he's blindsided, but it's just doing this for fun. We learn about Hayden and Kristen keeping the showman on the down low, but they end up making out under the sheets. But Andrew hears them from the other end of the room, and he hears what they are saying. Remember this for later. Rachel lies and tells Kristen that Brittany and Monet think she has to vote, and this annoys Kristen, so she asks Brittany about this, and Brittany denies it, since it never happened. Brittany tells Monet to come over, and Kristen asks her about it, where Kristen mentions that Matt doesn't deserve to go home over Monet, which, ouch, but hey, and Monet denies all of this. Rachel mentions that Monet hasn't spoken to her in 13 days, she won $10,000, and she would nominate herself and... Brendan, if Monet were to win HOH. The two of them end up arguing about Rachel making her seem like a bitch, and Rachel claims that she never uses that word, which is a lie, and then Monet threatens to punch her in the diary room. Monet knows that she is a gunner, and Brittany tries to make amends with Rachel, so she wants to be targeted by them, and Rachel is hoping to align with Brittany. They compare notes about Matt pretending to be blindsided, and Rachel mentions that Matt volunteered to be a pawn since she wanted Andrew up. Rachel is pissed off since she knew Matt was going to do this and play both sides, but she decides to call a house meeting where Rachel mentions that Matt is playing both sides, approached her about using Kim as a pawn, and Monet is obviously very pissed off since he acted paranoid when he already made a deal, though he states that he was being strong-armed and calling them bullies. Whenever someone calls a house meeting, it almost never goes well and it's almost never a good game move. Matt, Rachel, and Brennan argue some more, and Matt mentions that he has no alliances, which is a blatant lie, obviously. Monet is evicted in a 7-2 vote. Yeah, Monet definitely was not good at this game. I definitely think she was very emotional at times, seemed very catty with a lot of the women, and not speaking to someone for 13 days just isn't really a good move. Apparently, she was supposed to be Enzo's side alliance, but... Nothing really came of it, clearly due to her early eviction. A part of me did kind of feel bad for her during the week with how everyone was kind of just playing in her face, but she wasn't really an entertaining or a nice person at all, and I don't think she had potential to be anything else other than what she showed here. And I guess she continues the early boot week 2 model curse that happened during the era. I think week 3 is one of, if not the most entertaining week of the season, as there's definitely quite a lot of drama that happened in the week, and there's a lot of cock-blocking gameplay happening, and it was just really great to watch. 
So Kathy is fine with not voting in the majority, though Matt wants to find out who was the other vote. Since it's bothering him, it is an endurance competition and Hayden throws it, where Matt ends up winning the HOH after he and Ray can privately make a deal. Brennan and Rachel believe that they are in trouble since the worst case scenario happened. Matt speaks to Rachel so she can make her case to stay in the house. We waste a scene of people making fun of the way Enzo speaks, and Monet's picture is colored, so clearly this happened last week. The brigade speak, and Enzo mentions that Brenchel needs to go, but Matt isn't listening, since he knows Kathy voted him out. Hayden leaves the meeting to make out with Kristen in the dark, and he mentions that he will protect her. The other three are speaking about how close Hayden and Kristen are, though they think they're cousins, but they never do anything, so they're speculating that they are family members, though they mention that they like Kristen, but wonders if Hayden will turn on them for her in the end. Rachel and Brendan keep on making out everywhere in the house, and Andrew accidentally cockbox them several times as he's cleaning or just happens to walk in the room doing whatever. We have Lane and Brittany role-playing as Brenchal as they are working out, and Andrew talks about his kosher diet to the house guests. And I guess this is the start of us seeing Lane and Brittany getting close, though they're probably already close by this point in time. Matt speaks to the couple and did not appreciate the house meeting last week, and they tell him that he wasn't a target until the house meeting, but they make a pact to not nominate one another. Matt tells Andrew that he was the target at first, but he has become more well-liked where Matt essentially tells Andrew that he needs him as a pawn, and Andrew doesn't understand why he doesn't nominate the showman outright. Matt nominates Andrew and Kathy for eviction. Most of the house are not pleased with his nominations, and Matt mentions over and over again that he's the smartest person in the house, but he might backdoor Brennan still. Kathy and Matt have a chat where they mention, or she mentions that she was never getting for him and just wanted to support Monet, but Matt doesn't believe any of it. Kristen and Hayden give Andrew support since they were generally shocked, and Hayden tells Andrew that he will pull him off if he wins the veto. Andrew gets annoyed with Rachel putting peaches in the iced tea drinks since it makes the half knots not being able to drink it, and he goes on a rant about it. Kathy checks on Andrew, who rants about Rachel being insensitive, and he wishes to be alone with Brennan so he could just work with him without Rachel being around. Rachel's really doing great socially. Clearly and alienating the few people that she shouldn't be alienating. The Brigade asks Matt about his intentions, and it does seem like he's insistent on backdooring Brendan after this conversation. We get a segment of Andrew essentially being the housemaid of the house, and in a rare circumstance, the person who was supposed to be backdoored ends up winning the veto, meaning Brendan has the veto. We have a fellow segment about Lane talking about guns in Texas, which is so riveting. Not... And it's clear to me that the season is really a bore when they're just throwing random filler segments here that's about nothing. It is clear that Brendan is not going to use the veto, but Brendan knows that he needs to make sure Andrew stays in the house. And I forgot that Andrew was close in both of the competitions in the week, so he definitely had competition potential. The other brigade members make fun of Matt for not being the brains in the alliance anymore, since his plan backfired. Matt and Andrew have a talk, and Matt tells Andrew that he wants it to be a tie so he can vote out Kathy, but Andrew doesn't trust Matt, since he knew that Matt's plan was going to backfire, way before it did. Brendan and Andrew have a brief talk about how Andrew has to make a show tomorrow to make it seem like they are not together. After Andrew's fake speech attacking Brenchel, he doesn't use the veto, since Rachel would obviously be the replacement nominee. Essentially, most of the house does not believe Andrew, and it confirmed to many of them that he is working with Brendan. Rachel is really pissed off about Andrew's speech, and Brendan tells her that it was a part of their plan, and she's mad that he kept this from her. The house thinks that Rachel was behind the plan somehow, though it is inaccurate. Matt tells Andrew that he was staying yesterday, but his speech caused things to flip, since Rachel's reaction allegedly blew it, and it confirmed that he is working with them. Rachel was on board with booting Kathy, but now she's switching because of Brendan hiding the pen. She is so emotional and not smart in this element, where she doesn't even get why he did what he did or even wants to listen to it. Kathy talks about being a mom at 18 and had cancer soon after, so she needs the money, since after being told that you have six months to live and to get your affairs in order, she wants to protect her son, and Reagan is very emotional about it. Reagan mentions that he was going to keep Andrew, but this conversation changed things with Kathy. Kathy tells her story with Kristen, and Andrew is seeing this, which pisses him off since he was close to Kristen, and she has ignored him since the Vita meeting. He ends up 
crying because he's alone in the house and it causes a fight between himself and Kristen since he tells her to not play him like a fiddle anymore. Kristen didn't appreciate how he spoke to her or handled that as she isn't playing him but he rants about her not being there for him and she mentions that Kathy is always the one to approach her. They both of them are yelling at the top of their lungs and the entire house is hearing this and they both yell that they're digging their own graves. Rich, yes, both of them are digging their own graves here. Andrew has become such a huge target, and the bros realize that Andrew might be another shield. Andrew decides to call out Hayden and Kristen's secret showmance in his eviction speech, mentioning that at least Brendan and Rachel are out in the open, and the three of them argue as the voting is taking place, with him calling Kristen a huge manipulator. Andrew is evicted in a unanimous 8-0 vote. I honestly forgot how bad of a player Andrew was in this season. And there are so many things that he did completely wrong. And the worst part of it is he should have been safe. And it actually seemed like he was going to be safe. Despite that, I do think Andrew was entertaining for the short time he was in the house and brought some much needed chaos. It was clear that his religion hindered him in the game since he couldn't connect with people in the way that he wanted to. And he played a lot more honestly in comparison. Or at least that's what he tried to do. He was arguably one of the more interesting guys of the season, but he was the only one who went home for the first seven weeks, which kind of just sucks. So week four is weird in a kind of interesting way. It has some of the most iconic moments of the season ever, and arguably of the series, but that happens at the very beginning of the week, and most of the week is just very mundane, boring, and predictable, so it's not as strong of a week as I would have expected it to be. Rachel ends up winning HOH despite the house targeting her in the knockout competition. Kristen especially was the one who targeted her the most in the house. So Rachel unleashed on her, telling her that she's a floater who needs to grab a life vest. The two showmances start unleashing their venom towards one another and taking shots and Rachel adds onto Andrew's claims from an hour or so ago, mentioning that she heard them making out yesterday. Technically, it wasn't an hour ago, it was like 20 minutes ago. Kristen and Hayden deny, 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 and Kristen, as well as Rachel's degrees, ends up being insulted by the others. They are mad that Kristen said she would put them up, though the flashback footage says otherwise, though Kristen was clearly lying to them. The two women start fighting when they go back inside, and Rachel is annoyed that Kathy was hugging Kristen and Hayden. Everyone is happy that the fight is making them into larger targets, and the brigade realizes that Hayden and Kristen are going to be nominated, and this will be the perfect opportunity to send Kristen home. Hayden apologizes to Rachel, and she ends up going to speak to Kristen to apologize, who outright rejects to speak to Rachel and rejects her apology, which is a really stupid move on her part. Kristen refuses to go into her HOH room, just like Steven did two years ago, and everyone else is sick of having to pretend to like Rachel and her HOH room. Kathy tells Kristen that it will probably be the two of them being nominated, but she doesn't want to ditch Kristen. So it's the same thing she did with Monet. So she's consistent, at least. Rachel and Brittany bond, or pretends to, on Brittany's end, about bashing Kristen not doing anything in the game and everything Kristen does. Kathy speaks to the couple to make her pitch to not be on the block. She doesn't see herself as a flutter and doesn't want to be punished for Kristen. Hayden tells Kristen that she needs to speak to Rachel, and while she is stubborn, she does eventually speak to the showmans, though she lies about never going after the couple. They argue about semantics about their conversation last week, and they mention that they were friends at some point, and we do have validity to this since Rachel mentioned, I believe two weeks ago, that Kristen is the only girl that she wants to talk to. Brennan speaks to Rachel, and she mentions that she doesn't know if she wants to nominate Kristen, but knows that Kathy will go home if she's against Kristen, so Brennan kind of has to keep her in line. Rachel nominates Hayden and Kristen for eviction. Brandon is annoyed that Rachel made an aggressive speech since people will continue to go after them, and Rachel is annoyed that Brandon is lecturing her since the house now feels bad for them. That's what Brandon's words are, and that by them he means Hayden and Kristen. Kristen knows that she is a goner if she's nominated against anyone but Kathy, and Rachel enters the conversation to apologize. Rachel lashes out at Brandon who is claiming that they're going at one another and against one another, and Brennan mentions that she was perceived as a bully, and he's annoyed that she keeps using I instead of we. Brittany wins the veto, and it's clear that she's not going to use the veto. The showmans have a talk through the doors 
while Hayden is in solitary confinement for a day, where they both know that she is a goner. Hayden makes his pitch to Brittany to get her to use the veto, and they both agree that Rachel plays personality, but Brittany doesn't know if Kathy will be nominated. But if she does get nominated, then they can boot Kathy, and everyone boots Brenchel next week, where Hayden and Kristen would protect her. The two showmances have a conversation in the washroom as Rachel is dyeing her hair, and he says that no one is going to help them. But Rachel mentions that they need people to trust, and she has a hard time trusting them. He tells her about the deal that they made with Brittany about the Vita. Hayden tells Brittany that they agreed to nominate Kathy, but Rachel and Brittany have a conversation afterwards about what Hayden discussed, and Rachel mentions that she would put a plane, which is a very smart move on her part. This causes Brittany to change her mind, so she decides not to use the Vita. Kathy and Kristen talk about how Brittany is so controlled and is kissing up to Rachel, and Kristen knows that she is a gunner. Rachel and Brendan feel good about their move, and Hayden mentions that he has no hard feelings, and they reassure him about her safety, so he doesn't even have to campaign. Brittany tells Enzo that Rachel was going to put up Blaine, which is why she didn't use the veto, which pisses Enzo off. Hayden and Kristen are very saddened, and Brittany speaks to them about how she was going to use the veto, but Rachel told her that she was going to nominate Lane. The pair talk about how they won't see one another for two months. And actually, what happened is that right after the finale, entering the rap party stuff, Hayden's mom shut down the restaurant before it even was able to start during the rap party. But he tells her to campaign for herself. Brittany, Matt, and Reagan were making fun of Rachel and her extensions, but when she walks into the room, Rachel is a good sport about it. Kristen sees the four guys working out together, and she realizes that Hayden is in alliance with the other three guys, which makes sense, since he was fine with her campaigning, meaning that he had to be in an alliance whatsoever that she doesn't know about, and he would have had to have received guaranteed safety in order for him to feel comfortable with her campaigning. She relays all of this information to Reagan, and relays this to Brittany, where she literally predicts what will happen to Brittany by the end of the season, since she knows that Rachel and Kathy will go soon, where Kristen outright tells Brittany that if she goes, Brittany will have no chance to win the season, since the guys will stick together. Kristen ends up repeating this to Brendan, and mentions that she knows that they don't like or trust her. Rachel reveals in her HOH chat with Julie that herself and Brendan are planning to recruit Brittany in their alliance. Kristen is evicted in a 6 to 1 vote, and what's interesting here is that Brennan, in his goodbye message, states that Kristen lied about Hayden being in an alliance with the guys, which just shows how dumb he is in this game. So, Kristen really didn't get much of an edit in the season, as she was really only present during her final week in the house and the final episode of the third week. Of course, she had her showmance with Hayden, but apparently she was doing a lot of stuff in the house. She was making alliances with people, she was actually pretty good socially, and she definitely had some sort of strategic awareness, as she was the only one to figure out early on that the Brigade Alliance existed, and she did try to warn people. I do think she got very emotional at times, especially with her refusing Rachel's apology and not going to her HRH room, and even how she handled Andrew wasn't the best. But in general, I don't think Kristen's a bad player, but she just definitely derailed herself by the end of first day. Week 5 is arguably the most dramatic week of the season, as it is the conclusion of the Brenchel saga, and both of them have varying emotions throughout the weeks, where they have a lot of ups and downs, especially here, and it kind of makes for good TV. It is another endurance competition, and I'm shocked that they did two so early in the season, and it ends up with Matt winning once again. Kathy makes a deal about dropping to be a half-not, but didn't ask for safety from anyone, which everyone makes fun of. Though Reagan also mentioned that he threw it to remain under the radar again. Rachel is clearly annoyed that Brennan didn't do well in the HOH competition, or any of them, and he can sense her annoyance, since she isn't being emotionally supportive to him, while knowing that she's going to be the one who goes home this week. Everyone found a way to ditch the HOH room to avoid hanging out with Branchel, who is up there with Matt. Matt ends up getting the Pandora's box, and he ends up winning the Diamond Power of Vito, where he can take anyone off the block and replace one person with another house guest. Matt is honest about opening Pandora's box, but doesn't know what's bad will happen, and Reagan is offered to be the saboteur for the next two weeks by America. 
Rachel speaks to Matt and Reagan is present, where she doesn't care if he stays in the conversation or not. She has a conversation by herself, which Matt gives her props on, and Reagan is annoyed that Rachel called Matt and Reagan a pair, which is true, so I don't know, whatever. They end up arguing and mentions that Reagan can leave if he wants, and Brendan overhears the yelling, so he enters the room to get involved. The four of them end up going back and forth, and the entire house is hearing this. Brandon and Reagan end up leaving the room, so Matt and Rachel talk even more, and the other two continue arguing in the dining area and kitchen. Brandon later has his own talk with Matt, or he just joins Rachel's talk with him afterwards, but none of this matters as Matt nominates Brandon and Rachel for eviction. Of course, the showmans are pissed off that they are nominated, and they are making it known when they are in the kitchen, and people are worried because they keep on cutting things sharply and... They're kind of intimidating everyone. Brittany cheers Rachel up, though she's mainly doing it so they won't flash out at her. And we have more sulking and complaining from the pair. And Brennan mentions that if he wins the veto, he will take her off the block, which is foreshadowing as to what will happen next year. And Rachel starts to cry a lot because she's tired of fighting to stay every single week. She's too exhausted to play for the veto practice, which they did last season when Chima and Natalie were nominated. And... They do end up practicing all night. Unfortunately, none of this matters, since they do poorly in the Vita competition, and Britain lashes out, throwing a bowling ball in Jeff and Jordan, who are hosting his direction, and ranting afterwards, where Rachel has to calm him down, so they kind of did a role reversal here. Brittany wins the veto again, which is her third veto overall, and it's clear that she is not going to use it. Rachel is mad that Kathy was happy that she beat her in the competition, despite Rachel picking her, thinking that Kathy would lose, and it causes a huge argument between the two of them. Brittany rants about Rachel being a hypocrite, since she rubbed her victories in Monet and Kristen's faces when she was HOH, and whenever Brennan wins a competition, she rubs it in everyone else's faces. Brittany outright tells Rachel that she isn't going to use the veto, and Rachel feels some type of way, since Brittany was going to use the veto on Hayden last week, and she mentions that Hayden offered her the world. In my opinion, it's also because Hayden and Kristen actually have social games, unlike Brennan and Rachel, which is why she was willing to use it last week, but not this week. Brennan makes an obnoxious speech at the ceremony to attack Brittany, and she tells him off before deciding not to use the veto. Brendan is acting like a Neanderthal, so the house will vote him out over Rachel, and Brittany tells Rachel that Brendan doesn't like women, though Rachel is pretending to act like she didn't know what Brendan was going to do. Brittany bashes Brendan and mentions that he only goes after women and smaller people, which is definitely true if you look at all the people Brendan has argued with during his reality TV career on the two shows he did, and the brigade is making fun of the Huskies for not suspecting them. And so also mentions that Matt controls Reagan and Lane controls Brittany. Reagan speaks to Matt about how he wants Brendan to go, and Matt seems to be contemplating it, despite Rachel being the target all week. Rachel tries to clear the air with Reagan, since she and Brennan plan for her to reintegrate with the house guests once he's supposedly gone this week and she stays, and Reagan mentions that she has been involved in every argument throughout the season, so he doesn't support her behavior. Rachel walks off, and Brennan decides to lay into the two of them for pretending to be Rachel's friend and turning on her, though he is mainly focusing on Reagan in this argument. Brennan is called a Neanderthal, and he corrects on the pronunciation as his Neanderthal. Brittany makes fun of the way he walks, so they argue for a bit. The brigade decide that they are going to keep Brendan, since he's a worse competitor than Rachel, and someone will take him out, but they can also recognize Rachel if they want to. A few hours before the eviction, Hayden and Lane talk about how they need to target Brittany and Reagan, so they approach Rachel and Brendan about making a deal, so they work together and target Brittany and Reagan. Rachel is evicted in a unanimous 6-0 vote, and Brendan is shocked that he isn't evicted. Rachel is definitely very entertaining in the season, and she was one of the few things that was giving the season some sort of life. But at the same time, she was also very catty, very emotional, very poor strategically, and that cattiness and her issues with all of the women in the house rule her gameplay, and it just wasn't a good look. It was nice seeing the start of her and Brennan's love story, and even that was a train wreck of some sort. But you definitely miss her presence once she is gone, and I will give her credit for being reality TV gold. Week 6 is probably the best week of the season, especially pertaining to drama and somewhat pertaining to strategy. But it's kind of weird because most of the drama came from someone who wasn't even a house guest at this point in time. And the strategy would have been interesting had the 
Diamond Power of Veto not existed. So Brandon starts ranting as soon as Rachel leaves, and the house is pathetically heading like he's really going to do something to them. It's ridiculous. We have a physical H H competition, and the lack of mental competitions at this point in the season is extremely shocking to me. And I end up with Brandon winning the H H. I remember reading some claims that this was rigged for him because they wanted some drama. Of course, the house is regretting that they kept Brennan over Rachel, since she wouldn't have won that competition. Though, Enzo is more than fine with it, because he knows that he is safe. Brittany is crying to Lane about being a target because she stood up to Brandon, and Lane is insistent on protecting Brittany. We have more complaining from Matt, Brittany, and Regan, but Matt knows he is safe due to the diamond veto. Hayden and Enzo are talking about how they trust Brandon more than Matt at this point, since they do not like Matt's relationship with Reagan, and they want to target Brittany this week. Brandon tells Enzo that he wants to nominate Lane and Brittany, which does not please Enzo, who is pushing to nominate Reagan with Brittany, but Brandon is clearly not the most receptive. Enzo ends up reporting this news to Lane. Reagan tells Matt that he is going to speak for the both of them to Brandon, though Matt tells him to only worry about himself. Reagan speaks to Brendan about how he will not nominate him and mentions that them having an argument last week brings them a good opportunity to secretly align with one another, which is a good idea, actually. Brittany speaks to Brendan about how she will work with him and tells him whatever he wants to hear, and she tells him that she wouldn't veto Lane if she isn't nominated. Brendan ends up nominating Lane and Reagan for eviction. Brendan tells Lane that he is planning on sending Matt or Brittany home, so he is just a pawn. Reagan ends up winning the veto, and it's clear either Brittany or Matt is going to go up as the replacement nominee. Brittany and Reagan end up having a crying session where Hayden and Enzo are somewhat worried about Matt being put up, and me saying worried is me saying quotation marks worried, quotation marks meaning they ain't worried at all. Since a brigade member would for sure go home, and Hayden kind of tells Enzo that he's excited for it, since Matt has votes and allegiances that neither one of them have with the other house guests. Brendan decides to take Pandora's box, since he's expecting to go on a vacation with Rachel, but the truth is that they are switching places for a day. Rachel enters the house, guns blazing, ranting that she's back, bitches, for 24 hours. She goes at Reagan immediately and tells him that he has to be nice to her since she is a juror, and he says that he doesn't have to be nice to her, and he doesn't want her jury vote, quite frankly. She's told that Brendan is HOH, and they realize that Brendan is locked away, which caused her to be released. Reagan goes at Rachel for having no friends. She tells him that he's worse than the nerd herd. He calls her Rachel, and she should have came in with class instead of how she acted like the last few weeks, and tells her that everyone in the house dislikes her, while telling her to make him a drink. Rachel is caught up with the events of the week, and she asks Reagan if he's the biggest bitch because he's gay, and he says that no, it's because she's an absolute monster, and she was voted out on a unanimous vote, despite her boyfriend bullying people to boot him out. They argue even more in front of everyone until the HRH room is open and they all realize that Brendan isn't there and that's because he is in the jury house. Rachel and Reagan end up arguing in the backyard some more since she is making cookies knowing that he is a half knot and can't eat them. He makes fun of her extensions, her boobs, and the only thing real about her are the pimples on her chin. They argue even more and he says that her time in the game and her time bullying him is done and she says that he sucks at being gay, which yikes. Before she goes back to the jury house, she spells Matt on Brendan's HOH table with food, and she tells Kathy to make sure that no one opens it. And I am shocked that Rachel was allowed to do this, since it is interference. As soon as Rachel leaves, Kathy tells Hayden and Lane, and Brendan comes back seeing the message. Brittany and Brendan have another conversation, since he's trying to make sure that the deal is solidified, and of course she says this, since she doesn't want to get nominated. Reagan tries to vouch for Matt to not go on the block, but he mentions that Brittany will go home if she's up, but Matt won't. Brendan ends up nominating Matt as the replacement nominee. Matt is not allowed to tell his power or else he will lose it. So it's the same thing with Boogie and Jeff with their powers essentially. So he has to pretend to be worried and nervous about going home. Matt tells Hayden and Lane that if they are going to boot him, they should tell him. But he also mentions in the die room that he won't use the power if Layden gets the most votes. Hayden tells Matt that Rachel told Brendan with pretzels to nominate him, and he knows because Kathy told him. So Matt is eyeing on using his power on Kathy, which is just a really stupid move on his part. Lane is sure that he has Hayden, Enzo, and Brittany's votes, so he isn't worried. Enzo is trying to get Matt's jury vote, which sketches Matt out, since he knows that he's getting voted out by his alliance, 
So he's claiming on using the power on Enzo. And I'm saying claiming because I highly doubt he ever really considered using it on Enzo. Despite being told two hours before the eviction by Hayden and Enzo that he's going home, as Hayden was honest about how Matt would beat him in the final two, while Enzo skirts around the topic, Matt uses the diamond power of veto on himself and names Kathy the replacement nominee, because he claims that he wants the strongest army to go after Brendan. Kathy is voted out in a unanimous 5-0 to zero vote. Honestly, Kathy never really had a chance in this game, and I honestly forgot how much of a target she was in the pre-jury. They mentioned how she was an option to go home during the Rene boot. She was the initial target for the Andrew boot. And she was seen as the target during the Kristen week if Brittany were to have used the veto. So it seemed like absolutely no one wanted to work with her. Though I do respect her for voting how she wanted to vote, despite this being a very vote with the house cast. So props to her for that. Gameplay-wise, there's really nothing to talk about, and as a personality, she is definitely a nice person, but she didn't get much camera time, so I don't have much to say about her or to get invested in her as a character in general. Week 7 is a week where, on paper, it should be a good week, but it just really isn't, especially with the Brigade Alliance finally turning on itself and us having a double eviction, but at this point, I just don't give an F about the cast at this point, and nothing interesting is going on whatsoever. And it's even more boring than the last few seasons that also had steamrolls at this point in the season. So Brittany wins the HOH and Lane is happy, while Brendan is optimistic and Enzo is nervous, since either him or Hayden will be nominated beside Brendan. Reagan and Brittany cheer because they still have Matt here and Brendan is going to go home. The brigade members clear things up with Matt and give him props for making the move he made, though he knows that they're just saving their asses. Enzo has his turn to make amends with Matt, though Matt is claiming that he needs to reassess things. Matt, Brittany, and Reagan talk about how things are looking up with them or for them, though she mentions that the pawn against Brendan is gone, meaning Kathy, so Matt throws out Enzo's name as a nominee. We have a filler segment of Lane lifting weights, and Matt has a dream about shirtless hating, and it's clear that there is nothing happening in the house at this point. Brennan speaks to Brittany about if she's going to hold on to their deal, but he threatens her that he will win H to H and target her if she breaks their deal, but mentions that the guys were throwing her under the bus when he was H to H. I remember him doing the same thing when Hayden was H to H, where he tries to like assure deals and stuff like that, or say he wants to work with someone, but he threatens them in the next breath. Lane, Enzo, and Hayden are talking about Matt sketching them out and how he is the best positioned person in the house, where Enzo wants to get Matt on the block. They all speak to Brittany and mention that everyone wants Brendan out, but they start to push Matt, but Brittany doesn't want to deal with his scheming and drama. Brittany suggests the idea of him going up as a pawn to compete against Brendan in the veto, and Matt is adamant about not going on the block. Brittany nominates Brendan and Enzo for eviction. Matt makes it clear that he doesn't care who goes out between Brendan and Enzo, and Brendan is really pissed off that Brittany broke her word, and it was really stupid for her to do so, and it shows her more emotional gameplay. He is talking to Rachel, really to himself, since it's getting to him, and calls Brittany a lying whore while speaking to Enzo, which, yikes, and you notice Brendan only has this energy with women and gay men. Enzo speaks to Brittany and doesn't trust what she is saying, since she has proven to break her word. Hayden speaks to Lane about how Matt needs to be backdoored or else he will run the game. Lane speaks to Brittany about how she needs to make a huge move and that is Matt and he has Reagan. Matt thinks he has her since Matt will put up the pairs, meaning Lane and Brittany or Endo and Hayden. Brittany rejects this, though Lane mentions that Brennan is a loner who can go at any time. Brennan wins the veto and it's essentially a how bad do you want a veto and we all know that this incentivizes the target to do anything to win the veto. And Brittany is very pissed off. Brittany is mad that people took the prices, mainly Hayden, and it's akin to them reacting poorly to Chilltown, James, and Marcellus taking the prices in All-Stars. Brittany has a meltdown after the competition, ranting to Matt and Regan, which she just looks horrendous, while the Brigade and Brennan think that Matt is pushing to nominate Hayden or Lane. Lane tells Brittany to calm down, who is ranting about Brennan coming for her, since he tells her that he only got the phone call, but frames the other prices on Matt. There is another Pandora's box, and it, it's clear they're trying to make Pandora's box happen, but it just never really does at this era. And it involves her seeing Jesse, where she thought it was a strategy session, but it's for him to give her workout tips. Matt throws Reagan under the bus as a replacement nominee situation to send home, which really rubs Brittany the wrong way. 
He tells the brigade members that it's what he's going to push, where they all push for Max to go up and out. Brittany mentions that she will kill him if he finds out that he's in an alliance without her. While waiting for the ceremony to start, she mouths to Reagan that Matt wants to send him home and threw him under the bus. Brennan takes himself off the block and Matt is named the replacement nominee. Matt is shocked that he is up and Reagan is upset that Matt threw him under the bus, so he doesn't care that Matt is nominated. Reagan doesn't speak to Matt for a while and Brittany doesn't tell Matt that she told Reagan that Matt threw him under the bus, though Matt puts all the pieces together. Matt speaks to Reagan but plays dumb about everything, which doesn't help his case. Reagan starts to piece together that Matt, Reagan, Enzo, and Hayden are in an alliance since they mentioned that Hayden and Enzo decided to split their votes and Reagan realizes that people only split their votes unless they're in an alliance but don't want to show their cards. So he had a wake-up card similarly to how Kristen had a wake-up call a few weeks ago since they felt very, very safe by they, I mean the brigade. So they start saying stuff like, we're going to split the votes or you can campaign because I feel safe, so on and so forth. Matt denies all of it, pertaining to the Alliance, and Matt tells the others that Reagan is aware of the Brigade, though they don't know if Matt was the one who told him about the Brigade. Matt is evicted in a unanimous 4-0 vote. Right off of rewatching the season, I feel a lot worse about Matt's game. Obviously, he definitely has some strategic insight, he is good at competitions, especially endurance, and he is great socially, but some of his strategic reads were very off. He was extremely naive and he threw people under the bus who were more loyal to him for people who would throw him under the bus time and time again and he had evidence of that. And I do think that him thinking that he's so much smarter than everyone else caused him to overestimate his abilities and it caused him to make some mistakes that many others picked up on and just sketched people out. As a character, he was fine, but he's not the most stand out. To be honest, though I do think his lie about his wife was just ridiculous. It is the double eviction and Hayden wins HOH and nominates Reagan and Brendan for eviction. Reagan ends up winning the veto and Brittany is named the replacement nominee. Brendan is evicted in a unanimous 3-0 vote, where he was the pawn who became the target. Honestly, Brendan is kind of a weird one, especially when you look at his reality TV career in general where... We only saw him on his own for two weeks, and during those two weeks, it was like he was a completely different person than he was with Rachel. And I don't blame Rachel for that, but I do blame him for how he just completely caters to the person he is with, and how he lacks foresight into the game. He saw things solely about competitions, and he didn't have a good social game at all, and had no social grace. And he ignored a lot of information that he should have picked up on, like Kristen warning him that there was a huge alliance that he wasn't a part of. And he never really played for himself throughout the entire season, despite being very smart and very physical. I still don't feel like we got to see or know Brendan for who he is as a player or a person on his own. I'm not even going to waste much time on week 8, which is one of the most boring weeks in Big Brother history especially of the ones that I've covered so far and potentially of all time, and I don't even have much notes on it. So Reagan knows that he's in a win or lose position, while Brittany feels very comfortable with everyone in the house. Enzo is still not over Brittany nominating him, and Lane is hoping that Enzo wins so he doesn't have to pawn Brittany. Lane ends up winning HOH, and of course Enzo rants more and more about how Brittany needs to be nominated, where Reagan knows that he's on a lifeline in this game. We get a bunch of filler segments, and Lane is figuring out who the pawn is, though he tells Brittany that he is going to make Enzo the pawn. Lane asks Brittany if she would veto Reagan, and she says no. She is annoyed that he won't even consider nominating Hayden, but will consider nominating her, and mentions that she was his friend since day one, where Hayden only got close to him since Kristen got booted, which is a bad read on her part. Lane speaks to Enzo and Hayden, asking one of them about who wants to be the pawn, and obviously neither of them offered to be the pawn. Lane nominates Reagan and Enzo for eviction. Reagan realizes that Enzo is at the bottom of his alliance, so if he stays, he plans on working with Enzo. Enzo wins the veto, and both him and Reagan are poor sports about winning slash losing, and Reagan knows that he is a gunner, since he isn't in anyone's plans. Brittany plans to stay close to the guys all week, and she nags Lane about who's going on the block, and he doesn't give her much of an answer since she could go home, and we do see Hayden and Enzo, mainly the latter, plot to send Brittany home to split her and Lane up if she is nominated. We have a lot more filler here, and long story short, 
Enzo takes himself off the block, and Lane names Hayden as the replacement nominee. Lane reveals in the diary room that he wants to take Brittany to the final two, since he knows that he can beat her at the end. Hayden and Enzo talk about how they are going to get Brittany out, though Lane realizes that she has more enemies than his own allies. Reagan campaigns to Brittany, and he mentions that she will automatically lose, where she will have a chance at the end with him, since Brinjo will vote for her over him. He really lays down why she should keep him in the house over Hayden, where Reagan also pitches the same points to Lane, since he knows that he needs two votes and he will never get Enzo's vote. Reagan is evicted in a unanimous 2-0 vote. Reagan of course had the great moment where he was fighting with Rachel when she returned as a saboteur, essentially for 24 hours, but outside of that he really didn't give much at all. He was just a very under the radar player for most of the season and while he had that awareness to do so and he was able to pick up on the brigade, eventually it was just too late and he definitely has a snobby air about him at times throughout the season, though you can definitely tell that he was struggling with dealing with the house guests at the end since he really just didn't have much in common with them. Seeing how bitter he got post Big Brother 12 about Big Brother in general is definitely a sight to behold I guess. Week 9 is another boring week in this boring season, and Brittany definitely got what she deserved. Hayden wins HOH, Brittany feels alone in the house, Enzo is talking about being the mastermind of the season, and Lane is annoyed that Hayden won, since he wants Brittany in the end with him. Hayden realizes that no one is going to take him to the final two, since he's a better competitor, so he proposes a final two with Lane, but he's just telling Hayden whatever he wants to hear. Hayden makes a final two deal with Enzo as well. There is so much filler, even more than a typical final four round. Brittany is talking about wondering if she's still engaged, especially since she hasn't spoken to her fiancé in months due to being in the house, and Lane mentions that he knows her fiancé isn't for her, which is true since she does get married to someone else soon after the season, but it is clear that Lane has a crush on her. Hayden and Enzo talk about how Lane is on the outs of the brigade and is essentially the new Matt. Hayden nominates Lane and Brittany for eviction. Lane is telling Hayden whatever he wants to hear, but he's intending on booting Enzo if he wins the veto, and Enzo knows that he's a gunner if he loses the veto, though he and Hayden think that Brittany is the biggest jury threat. Brittany pitches to Hayden that Enzo is the biggest jury threat, and she has three guaranteed enemies, which are Brenshaw and Kathy, and Matt won't give her a vote either. Hayden wins the veto, and the brigade decide to tell Brittany about the Alliance, since she is the last person in the house that isn't in the Alliance, and they want her to tell the jury about it, though Lane is not receptive to it, but he can't tell them why, meaning it would ruin his chance of getting her jury vote, and potentially her friendship. Brittany of course has a complete breakdown and meltdown about it, as she comes to the realization that she was stripped, and she never had a chance in the game. Lane tries speaking to her, since he generally is bothered by hurting her, but he can't soothe her telling her that he was going to take her to the final two, since the others have power and if it gets out and they know about it, he will be booted third. Hayden doesn't use the veto and ends up decides to vote to evict Brittany. While Brittany definitely had her likeable and funny moments in the season, I found it to be very mean-spirited catty and her gameplay was very emotion based. I do appreciate how she always thought week to week and how to get it through week to week, telling the people in power what they want to hear, able to put her pride aside to kiss butt, but outside of that she never really actively planned to position herself well at the end and she played very personally with who she targeted and who she kept around. Overall, I don't like her as much as everyone else does in this season, but she isn't horrible or even that bad, so yeah. There's really nothing to say here. A boring week for a boring final three for a boring contestant and a boring and horrible finale format. No one thinks that they're going to get taken slash chosen to the end at this point. Hayden wins part one of the final H to H competition and Lane ends up winning Part 2 of the final H to H, which they did live, like Big Brother 11 did Part 2 live last season. And so rant about how he built the alliance, but the fate is out of his hands, so he's going to manipulate someone to take him, yo. And apparently Lane and Hayden made a final 2 early on in the season, but so much time has passed since then. Hayden wins Part 3 of the final H to H, making him the final H to H, and he evicts Enzo. Though Lane reveals in his 
goodbye message that he would have taken Ento to the end. So I can see why Ento was the only one out of the brigade to ever come back, since he did have some charisma, and that some charisma was a lot more than all the others had. So he was kind of the most interesting one, though he kind of just annoyed me for a lot of the season. And I came off like he was kind of jealous that he didn't have as many options as the other members of his alliance, so he would try to sabotage it. But he was definitely great socially, and what worked for him strategically worked with getting into a solid alliance and just being friendly with everyone and not rattling the fence with anyone or pissing people off. I don't know, I don't really have much else to say, and I didn't find him very funny, but he was more interesting than the others, like I said. Rachel asks Lane about how could they justify voting for him based on his poor competition performance, and he responds that he played the game in all aspects, and he started winning at the end. Brennan asks Hayden which non-brigade members would he have liked to see at the end, and he responds Brennan and Rachel at first, based on competition, and also mentions Brittany, but he changes his answer to Brendan and Brittany finally. Matt asks Lane if he would have chosen Brittany or the Brigade at the end, and he says it would depend on what would have been beneficial, and Julie outright calls him out for not answering their question, and after that, he says the Brigade, though we all know that he's lying. Kathy asks Hayden if he played a much better game than Lane did socially, and he responds that their social games were pretty much the same, as they had a duo and a side alliance, but his social game was as equivalent to Lane, and he also mentions that the things that stand out was competitions, which he mentions a lot here. Brittany asks Lane about his most individual contribution to the brigade, and he responds by making them laugh and looking after them, and he doesn't have an answer to anything, essentially, which is very annoying about Lane in this jury deliberation. Reagan asks Hayden if he has any regrets about whatever he said behind other bags, and he responds about the things in the DR, but he doesn't have anything specific. I wonder if this was Reagan's way of trying to give Hayden more votes, especially with it being later revealed that Brenshaw voted for Lane to win over Hayden because Hayden allegedly made fun of Brendan's dick size, apparently. And so asks Lane if he would have really taken him to the finals if he won, and Lane of course tries to skirt around it, but mentions that he thinks he would have had a better chance against Enzo than Hayden. Hayden's final plea is being blessed to be there and hopes that the jury decides the winner based on who played the game the best, but he stands out because of the competitions, and he won the last three HOHs in a row that he was eligible for, and he won the veto that secured the brigade the final three, while being a genuine guy in the house. Lane's final plea is that the jurors have awesome elements and congratulates them all for making it to the jury, and mentions that he played the game in every aspect, despite not winning many competitions, and stayed in the background at times. Hayden wins the season in a 4-3 vote. Lane, on his own, doesn't really stand out much as a character, though they tried to make him comic relief, and I believe that they only made him that because of his accent, and they kind of just played the country bumpkin stereotype and archetype with him, and the fat bro who likes to drink. But outside of that, Lane isn't someone that you're going to remember solely on his own outside of the grade. But it did shock me with how self-interested he was at the end game, and it definitely has me thinking higher of him as a player than I did entering this. But overall, he was kind of just fine at best, though he was apparently a lot worse on the feet from what I gathered. I think Hayden's a pretty good winner and represents the season very well. In competition performances mattering, being very bro-centric in an alliance, and being able to really work the house socially. On his own, he was arguably the most boring member of the brigade, and I found his scripted diary rooms really horrendous, especially at the end game. But in general, he just has all the basis of being a good big brother player, and deserves to be the figurehead of the brigade, or the best representation of the brigade. So, yeah. It says a lot that this video is only barely over an hour long, and this is the shortest video I've done reviewing a Big Brother season, which included the 10 BB Ken seasons I covered, and one of them didn't even have live feeds, and the 10 Big Brother seasons of US that I've covered beforehand that are nowhere near this short. In general, I found the season to be easier to binge than what was reported 
to have been a very boring watch on the feeds. And it definitely does have some highlights, but they are so sparse that it doesn't make up for the many boring weeks of the season and some of the weaker cast members pertaining gameplay and personality. And like I mentioned earlier, production wanted to replicate this and they were able to replicate the season a few more times and heavily pushed the season in sequester for future seasons because they found the season very easy to edit, it was easy to manipulate the Huskies to say whatever they want to say, and they were able to carve them into stereotypical boxes even more while pushing the more cartoonish vibes of Big Brother that it has been known to be as well as the huger emphasis on showmances. There are definitely some good moments in the season, but I still think it's one of the lower tier seasons so far of the seasons I've watched in BB USA. But with how my opinions of the more recent seasons haven't been the highest, though that could change in a rewatch, this season might bump up more than I would have expected it to. So I really don't have anything else to say, and I'll be back with a BB12 Gameplayer Tears ranking very soon. Take care.